The note latch holds notes and is useful for drones. Of all the new note effects, this is probably the easiest to understand, but maybe the most difficult to apply or actually use in your own productions. Everybody uses this program differently. And so for those of you who maybe find or can see a lot of uses for the note latch, please do share those, especially with these different modes. Uh, please do share those in the comment section below. But first and foremost, let's just go through how this works. It is very straightforward. As you can see, when I hit a note, here's in, here's out, it's just going to hold that note indefinitely. Now, it is still reacting to this envelope that we have set up. You can hear how those releases are coming over each other and we'll make it more extreme. Right? And I think one use that you could uh, potentially have for the note latch, and I'm not saying I would do this, but it is possible, is you could go in and you could really try to dial in what you have with like an ADSR or another envelope to have it match. You could do it simply because instead of always constantly having to hold the note out, you could just hit it once, keep re-triggering it. And this isn't always going to be as useful with release, but definitely with attack and decay, you could sort of find exactly where you want it to be, focusing on that while just having to hit the note once. So if you know, like, okay, I need a long attack, a long decay, all I have to do is tap the note, and it's going to hold it out for me so I can hear that in context. Uh, so that's one place where you could possibly use the note latch. It is also worth noting at this time that uh, you can stack notes on top of each other, but you have to do it in a very particular way. So normally, if I hit two notes, the minute I release those notes, now the next note I hit is going to cut that off, and it's going to play legato with whatever else I hit next. But if you want to stack notes, it is possible as long as you are holding down the notes previous. So in this example, if I want to stack C, E, and G, I can then let go and it will continue to sustain those out. So that is something to be well aware of. That's an important point. Obviously, you could combine the note latch with things like your, um, what do they call it in here? We just looked at it not that long ago. You could combine it with the multi-note, with the diatonic transposer, with the arpeggiator. All of that stuff is fair game. But most of the time, if you're trying to get a perfect length, you are going to end up using the note length and not the note latch. If you are in a live situation and you are creating a drone and you're doing like edits on the fly, uh, there is, a, of course, a really useful application to this. You could go in, you could just hit your C note. And then if you had a bunch of effects in here, you now have two hands free that you can use to manipulate that sound over time without having to worry about going in and holding down a note, taking away a finger or removing an entire hand. Um, and if you're just jamming as well, you could do that, right? You could just hit in your one note and then just go to town. Also would be very useful for um, potentially working with the note side chain. All right, this would be something to consider if this was like more of our dummy that we had set up. You could go in here and use uh, a, a note latch from a different place and then have that recording in so that if you had a really long sort of envelope or something, you could just hit a note once and that's what would go ahead and trigger that. And that's again where I think some of these other modes are also supposed to come in handy. Uh, although for me, I've had a tough time really figuring out when I would ever use toggle and velocity, but I do kind of understand how they work, so I can show that to you here. Um, the mono thing, I don't really get the mono thing. Uh, I'll show you what happens with this. If I hit my C key, I have to hold it down, and on the second hit, it cuts it off. So it's very similar to toggle, with the exception that I can kind of go up and down pretty easily here.
if I try to stack it's not going to work. It's going to keep it in mono, but it doesn't hold out the note indefinitely. It only holds it for as long as I hit it. And then the second time I hit the same note in succession, it doesn't play. But I can go back and forth. Toggle is like a toggle switch. So you hit it, it activates it, you hit it again, it doesn't work anymore. So this would probably be more useful for triggering some kind of an envelope that a note sidechain is going to be using. So I'll show you this here. So I hit my C key. I let it go. I hit it a second time. It doesn't play. I hit it again. It plays. All right, now let's try this out with a couple of uh, different notes. So I hit my C key, it plays. I hit the D key, it plays. I hit the E key, it plays. But now when I go back and I hit the D key, it turns off and it doesn't play. Or if I go to the C key, it's not going to play. I go to the E key, it's not going to play. So it remembers based on the key you're playing to toggle it then back on and off. So now the C, D, and E key will all work. Velocity is another sort of toggle mode. And again, the real application I see for this would have to do with triggering some kind of like a note sidechain. And I'll have an example of that at the end of the video. So you'd kind of set up like a dummy clip and you would just have like a note latch on that. And then that is what you would use as the basis for your note sidechain going in. And that would also maybe be a time when mono would come in handy so that you're not constantly re-triggering things. Um, and again, you'll see where this is gonna come in handy a little bit later on. But just so I can show you what's going on with velocity, as a reminder, what you're seeing here in this in is whatever I'm typing in. But what you see on out is actually what the sampler is responding to so that's actually determining the notes that are getting generated really important detail and i probably should have made that a bit clearer from the beginning but now that you have that in mind it shouldn't be an issue okay so with velocity if i hit a note and the velocity is over 64 it will trigger okay and it will generate a note and we can hear that like so all right, now, any time I hit a note over the velocity of 64, it is not going to generate a note. And we do not hear anything. And this is why it would work so well as a feed-in to some kind of a note sidechain triggering an envelope. So when it's on a separate track, we'd still be hearing something output, right? But it wouldn't be re-triggering that envelope again and again. When I hit a note and it goes below 64, all right, it now will allow me to generate another note once I go back over 64. And again, I'm hitting C every single time. So now when I'm over 64, nothing is going to play. I hit a note under. It now will allow a note to be played. Oop, I guess I didn't go under enough. It now will allow a note to be played. I let go, and it cuts that note off. So that's the basics with velocity. So if I go to the D key or the E key, it's going to be the same principle. And if I go in under 64 from the start, it's not going to play anything, but at least it kind of resets things. I play something under 64, it resets, I go back in over 64. And obviously you could then set this to wherever you want it to be. And one thing you could do if you were really going to set this up manually is you could go in and put something down like, I don't know, really, really low so that you'd almost have to just go in and manually draw that one in to then reset it if you wanted to get fine-tuned control. That's the basics with velocity. And so in the next little part of this video, I will have an example using the toggle mode, which follows the same principle, but doesn't, or I should say, isn't tied to velocity. All right, look forward to that. I'm a little worried that I got a little too theoretical with using the note latch. So I'm just gonna show you a really quick practical example. So here we have a track called Envelope Trigger with the note latch on it. And this is a very basic example. So follow the logic. You could use the velocity to go even crazier here. But with toggle, every other time I hit a key is when that note is going to be generated. So it's not going to generate every time. It's going to generate every other. Why is that important? Well, if we go here onto our piano track and we use this envelope trigger 
as our note sidechain source, we could have it so that it would only trigger this envelope every other time that the key is pressed. So in this case, I have it set to this uh, mix value here on the delay. So the first time I hit the note, we're not getting anything. But the second time I hit the note, you can see that that delay is being brought in. We could obviously make this more extreme if we wanted to here. So let's do that again. I hit it once. No delay. Second time we get that delay. And we'll constantly be getting different settings because this is happening for every note kind of independently. So that's where you could potentially go in and if you had a lot of control or you wanted to manually draw in velocities or even just use like the chaos command, you could get different settings on some of these parameters for a little bit extra modulation. And in this case, based on uh, the number of times that you're hitting a specific note. So it adds another sort of element of randomness to it, a little bit of humanization. This is just one very obvious example, but imagine doing this in small doses on a bunch of different parameters. I could imagine you'd get a really interesting part that you really just couldn't do any other way. So that would maybe be one other practical application of the note latch beyond just the have the note sustained so that you have hands free to do other things, uh, you know, even if that's checking your email. So uh, there's just one quick example for you, and I hope that you guys find other uses for the note latch. Thanks a lot.